Hey, what's up, Paul? To Wardrobe here and Jeff from Hex to Hex. He's playing a World of Tanks, so he's here. He's going to mute, but if he has a question, he'll come on and ask and say, Todd, how do you do this? That's amazing. All right, so this is a learning game, everybody. Uh, so I'm just going through the training scenario. And again, I think I think this makes great video content, me reading rules. So let's uh, go through this. I'm going to go for about an hour because I have The Last of Us to watch in uh, on HBO. And so I need to uh, go watch that at 8 o'clock, my time. But you can wait a few minutes. So we'll get going here in a few seconds. Okay, so here we go. Jeff, you can hear me all right? I'm just looking at, okay, you can hear me. All right, great. All right, so, and and I do want to welcome, congratulate Peter for being the first. You get a big bowl of jack squat for that. So thank you. Hey, um, no, seriously, thanks for coming on, Peter. And anyone else? Oh, you're it, Peter, so I don't need to say. But if someone else jumps on and catches up, thank you. All right, so training scenario, Band of Brothers, um, East Front, Ghost Panzer. Just got it yesterday. Wanted to give a shot here. So the, the Russians have to take this, um, oh, let me make sure I'm reading it right, uh, Victory E6 F5. Yep, so they have to take this building here, stone building, that's a plus uh, two to, uh, or minus two to combat. Everyone's concealed because they're all in protective terrain. Now, if someone's played this, uh, and I know it's kind of weird with all the concealed markers, but that's how it would be if you're playing against somebody. Um, but it's also cool because I my memory's short and I can't remember where I put everybody. I kind of have an idea. But anyway, um, so they're trying to take that in four turns. Everyone gets one command point. Command points allow you to do things like uh, maybe re-roll. Um, so you can re-roll an infantry morale check. The player moving second may perform one action. So right now the Russians go first, so the Germans um, could do an action. Uh, they have... Uh, so that's command points, and you're given a variety. There's these little counters here, the command points. I know the, the picture's not fantastic because it's my webcam, and I need to bring my uh, Brio here so I can get a better better picture. And I'm also cheap and don't pay for the high level at StreamYard. Let's see here. Um, what's the other thing? Okay, so they have something called com uh, operations range. And if I understand it correctly, so the Germans are one to four. So that means when... This is an alternating activation. So when the Germans go, they can activate one to four units. Um, the um, Soviets are three to four. So I think that's the minimum. I think I have to I have to activate three units if I understand that correctly. So if I if I'm getting this correct, the Russians have eleven units. So I I have to up. I can't just go four, four, four. Well, I guess I could go four, four, three. Yeah, I could do that. So there's a, a limit. Like I don't, if I read it correctly, again, if someone's on here, I'm going to try to read the rules as little as possible. Um, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I'm, just gonna, I'm going to drop and switch computers. Okay, I'll bring you back in. All right. All right so um, anyway, so that's the goal. Go across the building. And so as the Germans, do I want to use my command point now? Uh, oh, you can also reroll. You can command point for an infantry unit to conduct final op fire. You can reroll a melee, not close assault combat roll. You can increase infantry proficiency firepower by one, not greater than or less than or equal to your normal firepower. And you can increase unmounted infantry's movement points by one. So the Germans have this machine gun down here, and I would be interested in maybe making them op fire, wondering if these guys are going to go across. But I think. I don't think I'll do that because you fire, I think, op fire at proficiency op, um, proficiency, and I could increase that by one. So I think I'll do that. Um, okay, so let's uh, see here. I might have to pause when I get uh, Jeff back on here. And yeah, I got this cool 
dice tray from uh, Wiley Games, so thanks for that. Uh, Jay and team there, Jay and Robin. Okay, so I think as the Germans, I'll just let the Russians go here. So the Russians have a bunch. I think so what I want to do is I'm going to fire on these. You don't combine fire with anybody. So as soon as you fire, you lose concealment, which makes sense. So this guy fires at a four into this stone building. Um, the stone building is minus two. So it's a four minus two. So he has to roll two or less to hit. Um, I, and I could use my command point to do something, but I feel like I should wait on that. You get a command point per turn in this particular scenario. I'm just going to fire and try to suppress these guys. Um, and we'll see, we'll see what happens. I, I don't see a lot happening here. Um, so let's uh, roll the die. And I got a three. So that's not going to work. Uh, so, no, oh, and concealment makes it a minus one as well. So it's minus three. Oh, boy. So that's a one. Huh. Okay. So maybe I need to stop thinking about this. So that was one operation there. I've got um, these guys firing at five here. So then they would actually be firing at two. Hmm. I wonder if I could, you know, there's a thing called assault fire. I wonder if I could have assault fired them and then moved them. No, because when you fire, you stop moving. So you have to move and fire. That's interesting. Uh, okay, let me get him back on here. Well, his camera's not on yet. We'll wait till his camera gets on. So he's used. Oh, I'm supposed to mark him used. But pull out some used markers here. This will be kind of slow moving here. I do like these status markers that you can put them there like that. So that's kind of cool. I kind of like the hand. Uh, yeah, that's, that's not Comic Sans, but I know Comic Sans is made fun of here. Oh, there he is. Now I can put him on there. All right. Got yeah, it. Yep. Can hear it? Yep. Perfect. So the Soviets fired to no effect. These guys are firing at minus at, at just one firepower, Jeff, because of the building is minus two and the concealment's minus one. So I don't think that's very good. I need to change that. So I, I'm wondering if I should just move out there. If I move out here, these guys will get fired on. The concealment will be stripped, though, because they get fired on. So well, can't you I throw think... smoke or something? Uh, there was no smoke in the rules. So everyone, it, it goes through page nine, and there was nothing about smoke on up to page nine. So huh. they, they might have it. Not that I've read so far. We don't need smoke. We're the glorious Soviet Union. They're going to go next to him. Now, normally this would conceal, unconceal them. Um, but um, yeah, that's interesting, actually. But they're going to fire on him. They're going to op fire. And now I got to kind of figure that out. So anyone can op fire. This is going to be bad. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be super bad. But it's, un, it's stripping the concealment. Actually... Yeah, yeah, they're going to fire just to do it. It's going to strip their concealment, though. So they have a six firepower, but let's look at op fire here. I think actually op fire uses their proficient firepower, which is that there. There's two numbers, and uh, yeah, so their first number is six and a five. So they're firing at five. Uh, they are adjacent, so that is. Um, that's a plus three. Oh man, this is bad. This is really dumb. You wouldn't do this, but um, they're moving in open ground within one to four hexes. So that's a plus four. Now it's a plus seven. Yeah, they're dead. Oh God. Yeah, it's a plus seven to that. So now they're rolling on a twelve. Well, how do you how do you even move into an attack if you you got to cross the street? You do, but you want to what you want to suppress these guys. Press, that's one. That's thing. right. Oh, remember. wait, they have to make a, I think to off-fire, they have to make a morale check because they don't have an off-fire marker on them. So, hold, But it's a 10, so they automatically pass. Huh. Until they're, and so if they're suppressed, they have to roll a six or less. Right. Yeah. Oh, well, we're just doing it for, for grins. <laughs> See yeah. Soviets. All right, here we go. But it'll take that, strip that concealment because they fire. Um. A, a cool thing, though, I think I, if I understood it, like if these guys moved here and there was a German, like say over someone that could reach him, like this guy can't hit him, 
or none of these guys can either. But if someone could hit him, he wouldn't be stripped of his concealment if these guys break and have to get away or something. Right. So it's kind of cool. It's not, not automatically stripped, if, but they are going to conserve it. So anyways, they're firing on a 12. You roll a die, and it's a 9. Now, normally that's a terrible roll. Um, actually, they didn't hit him. Huh. Because you look at... So the adjusted firepower was uh, five plus seven. Oh, but it's minus one for op fire. So it's actually 11. And if 11 plus the die roll is less, okay. Boy, I thought I had this figured out, Jeff. I played it last night. I'm like, oh yeah, I got this enough to play it online. Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh well, I said I I put it in the title. It's a learning game. Okay. Um, all right, let's just go through the infantry fire here. Direct fire attacks. Direct fire includes off. Okay, blah blah blah. Terrain. Blah blah blah. Okay. Yeah. Beneficial terrain lowers the firepower, and being adjacent to the target will increase the firepower. Roll a die and compare it to the adjusted firepower, which we know is eleven, because it starts out at five plus three. Uh, plus three, plus four. Um, but then it is minus one for being out fire because they're not marked out fire. If they were marked out fire, then you wouldn't have that penalty, I think. Right. Uh, this one die roll is used individually against each unit in the hex. Apply this die roll for support. Okay, so roll a die and compare it to the adjusted firepower. So nine and 11. Oh, okay. Uh, apply this die roll for suppression cut. Okay, if the die roll is less than or equal to the... Okay, so it works. Less than or equal to the adjusted firepower, which was 11. I rolled a 9. The target is suppressed by one step. So it actually works. Because it's such a high firepower, that 9 actually works. That's right. So out in the open in the middle of the street right there, all they did was suppress him. Well, hold on. Uh, if, if it is possible... To add the first number of the target's casualty rating. So that everyone has a casualty rating. A three and a seven for the Soviets, a four and a seven for those guys, for the Germans. If it is possible to add the first number, so three of the target's casualty rating to the die roll, 12, and is still less than the equal firepower, it would be reduced. So I almost had it, even though I rolled, I had, rolled so high because it's such a high number. So three plus nine is 12. My firepower member is 11, but let's say it had been 12, they would actually reduce then and become fully suppressed. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, they just had a bad shot. I All mean, right, so you're telling me they're suppressed and then they're fully suppressed. What's the difference? Uh, well, suppressed, their, um, their morale is five. If they're fully suppressed, it goes down to the morale is one. Oh. So you have to roll one or less to activate them. Okay. And zero is 10 in here. So one is the lowest you can get. Okay, um, so they're used. Now, if they're suppressed while moving, I believe that they have to be finished now. Like, if he hadn't suppressed, he would be okay. Oh, actually, no, I think they have to pass a morale check. And then they also have something called final op fire, which that should sound somewhat familiar. Um, op fire results in results in suppression requires a moving unit to pass an immediate morale check. So I need a five or less. Four. Okay, that's cool. Even if it passed at the start of the move. Okay. And must pass an immediate moment or its move immediately ends. Okay. All right. So now, now someone else could fire on him. Do I want to do that as the Germans or do I, cause I got a lot of stuff coming here. So probably not. Now I would say if you've already suppressed him, I wouldn't, unless you can kill him. Can I? No, cause those guys are going to come straight across that road. Yeah. Grumbling Grong Yard just joined my hey. first, first subscriber. Oh, really? Yeah, he was my first subscriber. 
Oh, that's cool. Yeah, Grumman Garden Art. I mean, this this is even easier, I think, than Squad Leader. But yeah, it's kind of a nice replacement if, if um, just to modernize it. And, and you could probably adjust some of those scenarios if you're still in the game to this too. Although the board board size wouldn't quite work, I guess. Um, hex, hex size. Um, all right, so I can do something called Assault Fire here, or I can just enter melee, but I don't think that'd be smart because these guys would melee at a six and these guys would melee at a four. Um, but you know, glory for the country, right? Because if I up, if I Assault Fire, I think I'm only gonna fire at one. Right. Using the proficiency fiber after entering a hex, the unit is then marked used. I mean, I guess I could. So he's going to be, one, but I'm going to be one firing into a building that's two, so minus two. I'm adjacent, so it's plus one firepower. Um, so there are no effect as far as changing the fire. The player may spend a CP to raise the proficiency firepower by one. So, uh, oh, yeah, oh, up firing, up firing. Oh man, I could have spent a command point to raise it by one. All right, well, if I'm understanding this correctly, so yeah, I'm gonna fire on him. So I, I'm at one, uh, but it's uh, minus two for the building. So now I'm at negative one, but it's plus three because I'm adjacent. So now I'm at a plus one. Anything else? So I'm at a two. So I have to roll pretty low here. I rolled a four, so that, <laughs> that, that will not work. Okay, so they're used, but they're open now. You can Everyone can see them. Grum, Grumlin, I thought you subbed me out of pity. <laughs> Um, so that's two activations. And I think I'm going to, um, I got a little machine gun here. I think I'll fire on this guy. So he's a seven down three. So it's a four or less. And you do have to, you have to roll for morale even to do the first action, but they're all 10 to start. So you don't have to roll. Right. Oh my gosh, nine again. So that will be definitely be nothing. He's no longer concealed. <sighs> well, maybe I send another guy out there. Maybe he survives again. Hmm. Or as the Soviets, I can pause and let the Germans do something. I don't feel like I should do that. I need to channel my inner McMurray and go for it. <laughs> Boop. I have to remind myself, okay. Uh, yes, he'll fire on him, so that'll strip that. He's used one movement point. Oh, he shouldn't be reduced. <clears throat> I'm gonna use a little boy's room, be right back. Have fun. Shut the door. I'm mute. <laughs> or mute. <laughs> um, all right, what do we got here? Um, ASL was too much rules for me after the year. They sold okay, yeah, yeah. Yep, cool. Uh, okay, so he's going to move there. He's going to fire again. So we're firing at six, plus three, plus four. I'm sorry, it's five, so it's 11. We know that. So unless I roll a 10, I think a 10 is an automatic miss. So the Soviets are hoping for... Oh, my gosh. Seriously? I'm rolling the black die now. Or maybe I'm getting all the nines out of the way. Well, we know what happens. So it's a nine. So the nine is still less. Um, so they are suppressed. But it's not equal to that. So let's do the math again. So five plus seven. Oh, minus the, so five plus seven, because it's adjacent and moving in open ground, but then it's op fire that's not marked as op fire, so it's minus one, so it's plus six, so it's 11. I rolled a nine, that's less than that, so that's good. But if I add, I gotta get this down, if it's possible to add the first number 
of the target scheduling to the die roll, and there's all still less. Okay, so I add the three to the nine, that's 12, which is more than the adjusted firepower of 11. Okay, it's much easier than it's ma I'm making a sound here. So they suppress them. Now they're gonna make a morale check here. If they do, they can fire as well or move into the hex with them. Good Lord, okay, six. So he, he failed, so he's used and done and he's used. I think these guys are marked used and they outfire, yeah. So the, that Soviets, that's all they can do. They they can use three to four. So now the so Germans can use one, one plus here. So just so you all know, these both are decoys. So that's the intention of that is that, you know, the Soviets hopefully would fire on them and I'll do that because or try to go up against him, but I, I think he would fire. Um, I need to check line of sight here. I think you can go line of sight through here, but I need to actually read that. So anyway, so the Germans, I think, I think I'm going to put someone on op fire. That does not strip concealment. Um, I think I'm going to make this guy op fire. I could make even make this guy op fire. But I, I really want someone to shoot. Decoys can't shoot. They just move five hexes. I don't know about um they really should put this concealment like minus one over here in the corner. So you could put that there. Okay. Uh and that's all they're going to now. I do need to check line of sight rules. So does this work? I don't know, is this gonna show up on here or not? Boop. So can I fire through this building and this wood hex? So let's look up line of sight real quick. Uh, who do we got here? Uh, okay, you guys are still, I appreciate you guys coming on watching this. So, um, units can only fire at targets that they can see. Line of sight is determined by laying a thread, center dot to the firing unit's hex and the center dot. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Objects in the firing, okay, blah, blah, blah. It's normal. Translucent terrain. Line of sight is blocked if blocking terrain that is higher than both the fire and the target is in any of the intervening hexes and can be seen on both sides of thread. Line of sight may also be impacted by hindering terrain. Um, there is many different, I, so I don't see why you can't shoot there. So that's an, a, a viable shot there. Um, what are you trying to shoot at? Well, I put this German on op fire and he has a line of sight through here to this hex. Right. And th these are trees. This is a building. It doesn't hit any of the, sometimes if there's blocking terrain in a hex, if it's on either side, you can't fire through that, that thing, but like ASL, you can lock and low tactical. You now can, they used to say you couldn't fire through that, but I just want to see how they grow. And all they say is if it passes through the, the depiction, the tree, the right. building, then it counts. Right now, right. it doesn't count. Now, they do have hindrance terrain that kind of covers the whole hex, but I don't have right. any of that in there. So. All right, so they the Germans decided just, actually, you know what, I could op fire a couple guys because I got I to gotta use all my units. That's one thing I got to figure out. So I think I'll op fire this guy too. Jeff, I said, this is a decoy. Right. The decoys allow movement. The Soviets still have to do something with them, right? Because you let, as far as you know, that they're troops. Right. So you would probably fire on them or try to move up and close assault them. So it's using some of the resources here. They can't fire, obviously, but they make it look exactly like a counter, you know, in case that this moves or something, which is kind of cool. That makes sense. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. yep. So, but you can do, you can put, you know, counters on them and do stuff and because you know you would assume they're not real um i think actually i might um no i'm not going to use this guy to reinforce here yet and i don't want this guy well he can't fire on him anyway but he actually could they have final op fire you could use but i'm not going to do that uh do i want to move my machine gun because he's not getting used at all here he's supposed to be firing down this road to hit whoops he's supposed to fire down this road to hit anybody crossing this road um, but the Soviets kind of all set up here, so I couldn't move him. Who's set up first in this scenario? Us Germans. Okay. So then the Soviets 
heavy weighted here to kind of go take the side. Maybe they should have gone. I don't know. But then you would have to cross here. But the machine gun doesn't get like continued fire. So once he was used, he could buy. Anyway. All right. So there that the Germans are going to say that's all. So now the Soviets have to command at least three units. Again, if I'm reading that correctly. Um, well, this guy's used. I mean, I guess I could run, but I got to take care of these guys. And this guy's in a wood building, so that's a minus one. That's a wood building, too. Oh, I thought that was a forced. So let's see. Make sure wood buildings are minus one. But they're minus two because they're concealed. That does seem kind of hard to get them. It's like I got two. All right, so five into there. That'll be a minus two. That'll be three. So I got to roll through. I've rolled like four nines on this. So you are gone, too. Jeez. All right, I'm going to uh, command both these units. They're both going to fire. But, I mean, anyway. You can't combine fire. So this guy's going to fire on, uh, this guy will fire on him. Oh my good Lord. It's a seven. I rolled, not a one. Ah, gee, Merry Christmas. Okay. I gotta be, I gotta be moving here. Taxi. I can't be just sitting here firing and doing nothing. Yep. I agree. So the question is, do I roll out another guy out there? So that's one. Uh, yeah, I did not also did not promise good tactics here, so don't look for that. Um, I guess I'll take I'll move here and chance getting a fire. So let's look at final op fire real quick. Final op fire. Final op fire is similar to op fire, except that it is conducted by units that have been marked as used. Unlock op fire, final op fire may only be conducted against units that move into an adjacent hex. Oh, well, never mind. Uh, okay, so now I'm here. No one's firing on me, but so this now strips concealment because they're decoys. Now what happens to those decoy counters? I would assume they're taken off. Yep. So now the Russians are like, oh, yeah, baby. So that's uh, one movement. Uh, I guess, I, I mean, I might as well not quit messing around here. Oh, I guess it could move actually into here. So I can try to take care of this guy in the back. So that's two, three. I think it's two movement to move into a building. Yeah. So he's used three of his five. Uh, I think this guy would fire on him, don't you? So he's marked up fire. He'll now be marked used. He's going to strip concealment. Strips concealment because he shot? Yep. So it's five. He's in a building. Um, so it's minus one. So... He's at a four. So what does, I'm not moving in open ground. Oh, wow. So so up fire will just be, so it's just going to be, huh. So it's just going to be um, moving into the building. So it's just going to be minus two one it seems odd it seems like there would be another thing for moving and you know it's you gotta be careful though because you can't use the rules for other <laughs> other games right oh you can use this command unit to have someone op fire when they're not adjacent but within normal range so i could have used him here and i probably should have done that actually so you can use this command point you normally have to be adjacent, but he could have, he could have used it and it's within normal range, which is six. And he could have fired on him with the op fire, final op fire at minus two, but moving in the open. So probably should have done that, but I didn't snooze. You lose bro. All right. Okay. I'm just reading the rules here on op fire. Everybody. Uh, Okay. 
So it's just gonna, if, if I'm reading it correctly, it's just my, it's just uh, minus one. So it's a four. I'm roll, I'm, I'm rolling the black die. Oh my gosh, six. So it is more than the adjusted firepower, <coughs> uh, which was four. So too bad. You miss. Grumble says I would have saved the command point the way you are rolling. <laughs> Chuck, afternoon or evening for us, afternoon for you. Uh, flu. Okay. Didn't know you had the flu, buddy. No, that's a bummer. Get better. All right. So that was one, two, three, and then four, five. I'm doing it. Do it. So now one of these guys can final op fire on him, or both of them can probably. All modifiers for op fire are applied to final op fire in the same way as op fire. There is also an additional minus two modifier to him. Okay, so right now it's he moved into a. You know what? I might not. He moved into a wood building. All right. So he's adjacent. So it's plus three. So now he's at five plus three is eight. Minus two will be six. Man, maybe that's just dumb. Oh, well. Hey, way I've been rolling. Now I could up it and make it a seven. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm doing it. I'm using my command point. Do it. It's a seven. I roll a three. He suppresses. Nope. They have something called uh, sustained fire. I'm kind of excited to see what that's about. I don't need to have that there. So, oh, he's not suppressed. He's suppressed. And this guy fired. And all right, so three, three, and so my adjusted firepower is seven, right? Okay. And I rolled a three. Three plus this first number is still lower than that number. So now he is reduced. <laughs> Peter says, changing die color won't help you. Change to a D6. <laughs> oh, there you go. That is a good idea. That's why we have Peter on the show. <laughs> Hey, Charles, welcome. Grumbling, thanks for coming on. I don't know if I said that, but. Um, uh, let's see. If it's possible to have the first one of the casual rating in the center and, and fully suppressed. So he reduces, so you flip him over, and he's now fully suppressed. So now he's a, a one morale. Oh, I need to look. On final off fire, am I supposed to roll a, a morale check on that? does not say that i'm a little unclear on all the times you roll for morale checks that'll be something i got to kind of figure out yep okay yeah so the firing unit must pass morale check to op fire but again these guys are 10 so it's okay um i'm a little surprised they like they say if you roll a 10 you fail you know right but it says you always pass it so so the question is, do I want to, who's, so the Soviets still have one, two, three, four. They still got, oh man, they still got a lot of guys to go. So I think this guy will not, oh, I think I can keep firing that op fire. That final op fire. That's interesting. Is that true? I can just keep firing that? Yep. Every time. Well, then this guy might as well try to fire. Well, he's fully suppressed. He's not going to be doing much. So I can be done there. Um, and he's used. Sorry, bro. Sorry, bro. Germans all the Soviets are like, okay, Germans, you can go. <laughs> and they're like, okay. Um, and you have to do something with everybody. I think this guy will slide over here. You can't check line of sight until you fire. So that's one, two. Weapon teams only have four movement. 
Boom. So he's done. That doesn't seem like used. Oh, he moved. He's not in concealed terrain anymore. So even though no one can really see him, I think I think that's stripped. Uh, I, okay, concealed counter is removed if it becomes suppressed. An enemy unit or unmounted, not in melee, is adjacent. An enemy unit that moves adjacent. Okay, it is an open ground and line of sight to an enemy unit. If the oh yeah, so yeah, you can check. So this is a way to check line of sight. You know when you're not firing. Oh boy, that's a tight one. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to string that. Hope oh, he's good. So his concealment is stripped, so this guy could actually fire on him if he wanted, but he's suppressed. Um, so that could be bad. All right, Soviet's turn. I got to look at um, activating here and make sure I understood that. Uh, okay, operations range, which is what it's called. Uh, this abstracted, blah, blah, blah. A side that had an operations range three to six, mine's three to four for the Soviets, in a scenario would have to select between a minimum of three units and a maximum of six. Then the other side would be allowed to select units in its operations range. So a player chooses one unit or asset at a time and uses it. Player does not have to pre-select all the units, okay? Units, including decoys and assets, count against the operations range when they are each used. A unit that fails a morale check is marked with the use counter and counts against the operations range. Players alternate using their units within the limits of their operations range until all units have been used on both sides. Once one side has used all of its units, the other side may continue. So, oh yeah, that this is kind of interesting, Jeff. Vehicles, guns, and artillery count as three units. Really? Yeah, so if I had a tank here and my range is three to four for the Soviets, I could operate a tank at three and then operate one infantry unit to use my max of four. That's pretty cool. Right. A unity decoy that starts and ends its use concealed always counts as one unit. Wait, a unit or decoy that starts and, okay, blah, blah, blah. Oh, even if it's a gunner, so if a gunner vehicle are concealed, it's still considered one unit. So that only costs one if it's concealed. It's kind of cool. Um, a player may never use more than the maximum amount and must use at least the minimum amount unless it is impossible to select another unit without exceeding the maximum. In that case, play passes to his opponent. So if the Soviets are three, what I'm trying to figure out, Jeff, is so I've got, the Soviets have one, two, three, four, five units left. So I'm not gonna be able to operate one of those units. Okay. The, which is pretty, I think if I'm reading that correctly, I mean, which is kind of, so I, I, I need to, so I kind of messed up in my count of using my commands because I needed to use four, four, and three, really. Or three, three, and whatever the number is. If that makes sense, cause based on the number of units I have. Hmm, okay. Because I, when I get down, so I, do I want to use... Yeah, so in this turn, the Soviets, I want to use four, so all I have left is one that I can't use. Because I've got right now one, two, three, four, five left. I'm going to use four this turn. All right, so then this guy, this is when I wish I had bypass movement like an ASL. I could save some movement because it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so he can move in there. So he's going to go one, two. Three. This guy can op fire. Final op fire. So it's oh my gosh, it's seven. It's minus two, so it's five. So the final oh my gosh, this final op fire is pretty crazy. <laughs> so let's see here. He was here. Where was I? Because I was one, two, three, four, five. If I move into here. Oh, but op fire into now. This is interesting. Op fire into a hex with more than so. Oftentimes, you only fire at the unit that moves. Right. If you move, it, but this will this shot would impact these suppressed guys too. But the modifiers would be different, right? Because he hasn't moved. 
Yeah, that final op fire is pretty killer, yo. I think, let's see, if he was here, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm going to move him into this building. I'm going to take this chance. At least I have cover. Now, the problem is both these guys get to fire on him, which they will. All right, so what did I say? This guy's five. It's minus two for that, so it's three. But he's adjacent, so that's three. So that's six. <clears throat> Even the, Joey, how you doing? And the building is one. Oh, hey, Joey. Yeah, this, I don't think this is your kind of game here, guy. This is pretty simple. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, squad level, so ASL. I mean, not really, but you know what I mean. Yeah, ASL-ish, but super simpler, even though the way if you're watching me, it won't appear to be simpler. And, and, and Joey, I'm using the same bag, uh, bad tactics I use in ASL and Combat Commander and any other tactical level game. And I'm just trying to get my guys killed, and I'm doing a pretty good job of it. All right, so this guy will go first. He's a five. He's minus. Um, the question is, oh, yeah, but I automatically pass. So it's uh, five. Let's do the building first. Five minus one. So it's four. He's adjacent. So I had three at seven. And then minus two for the final op fire. So it's five. So I need to roll five or less. I rolled an eight. Nice. So this guy will fire, do the same. It's all going to be the same roll. Let's see what I roll. Nine. Holy freaking cow. That's awesome. This guy will assault fire. He'll fire at this guy, of course. Um, so it's two. In that building, though, it's going to be two. So it's a zero, which you can do. Wait, zero. How's that going to work? Wait, I guess you can't fire the... Oh, I thought you could fire the... Because you, you can only roll a one, right? I said that, right? D10s, a zero equals a 10. So yeah, actually, I thought you could fire with a zero firepower, but I guess you can't. Oh, no, he's adjacent, so it's a one. Okay. Ah, two. Close. Yesterday, I was rolling, like, when I was just kind of practicing, I was rolling, like, ones and ones a lot i roll runs a lot i guess i used up all my ones he's used so that's one now that final off fire man i gotta read about that this is i really need to suppress these guys so maybe i should just fire on these guys and try to suppress them the problem is there's gonna be a recovery phase and yesterday when i fired i um i was able to uh, sorry he's gonna strip concealment he's gonna fire on that guy it's gonna be minus two so it's going to be a three. Come on. Come on. Wait. Can I do something with that command point? 10D, good evening. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna use this to increase it to six. So six minus two is four. Come on, buddy. Do it. Do it. Ah, come on. Freaking awesome. I love, I love gaming. Yeah, and also, yeah, so um, what comments do we got going on here? Uh, hey, Tim. What's up, man? Tim D., nice to hear someone is proud of their work. Uh, yeah, an absence of worse kill something. Well, I'm trying. I'm trying. So that's two. Um, all right, well, this guy will fire. Another five. So he's going to be firing at a three. I don't even want to talk about it right now. You just be quiet, Jeff. I ain't got nothing to do with it. Okay, where'd that guy come from? He's not stripped there. What the heck? Was he there, really? That seems weird. Oh, my gosh. Oh, he was here. All right, well, I got one guy to do something with here, so. Let's see. So if he goes one, two, three, four, five. If he moves here, these guys will both op fire on him. Ah, dude. One, two, three. 
bring it, yo. So it's five. He's adjacent. It's so five plus three is eight. Moving in open ground, 12 <laughs> minus two, 10. So I can't miss. Well, unless I roll it. Well, actually, if I roll a 10, he's suppressed. Uh, tens count as. I got to make sure. I think tens you miss. Blah, blah, blah. Tens. A roll of 10 is always no effect. But you know I'll roll a one in this case. All right, let's uh, quit, quit playing around. Quit being a baby. Look at that. Yeah. 10. No effect. So I am going to move into melee. Boom. All right. Something new to learn. It's probably dumb because it's four against a six, but I don't care. All right. So he's used. Nothing happens immediately. I think um, whenever an infantry unit knocks out, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so boom. Woohoo! Nice. All right, so the Soviets are done. Germans have one unit left, and then that's it. So this guy, now that he sees this, um, I think it's time to move in there. And oh, I don't know if I want to do that yet. Probably not. He's uh, hmm. One, two, three, four. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, strip concealment. He can see him. One, two, three. Oh, oh, shoot. If he does that, these guys all get to fire on him. Oh, man, look at this. I thought, well, maybe I'll go around. Oh, no, he's a German. Never mind. One. No one can fire. And this guy can't fire on him from melee, so boom. Um. Joey says, simple strategy here. In the absence of orders, kill something. Yeah, I right, like Peter, it. Thanks for coming by, buddy. Thanks, Peter. All right, so all these guys are used. I'm just going to put that there. So that's the it for that. So now we're going to go to the next phase. My first operations phase. Woohoo! And they're selling, bundles. they're selling bundles right now too, Tim. So I'm going to... Um, Route phase, certain units check to see if they route. Oh, man, we got nine people watching. Thanks, everybody, for coming on. I appreciate it. I know it's kind of weird learning the game here live, but that's what we do here on this channel. We bring you the highest in rule reading content. All right, are we ready to route? Infantry, infantry units are in difficult. Oh, by the way, you can download these rules um, from their website. These are the 2.2 version, so it's always a good idea if you're curious about a game system. I still need the course on pocket two rules. I can't find them. I's got them. Wait, the new ones? Yeah, because I don't want to. They had them posted on their Facebook page, but the link's broken now. And I yeah, don't just, my book. you should just post there. I I, I know people kept posting up because I kept reading them when I was debating whether or not to buy it, but then someone convinced me not to. So, all right, infantry units that are in difficult situations on the battlefield may sometimes flee or surrender. This is represented by the route phase. The player that moves first, so that'll be the Soviets, must complete his entire route phase first. Infantry units and guns that meet any of the following conditions at the start of their part of the route phase are subject to route. Ahem. They are in the same hex and location as an enemy unit. They are adjacent to an enemy unit that is not in melee. Yeah, Worthington Publishing, Tim. If you Google... um. If you Google um, um, Band of Brothers Bundle, it'll take you right to that page, and then you can just see the whole store. Commando Solo 193. I love watching other people figure out games with rules. Oh, well, cool. Thanks, man. We're not guaranteeing you there, Commando, that we're going to figure them out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's accurate. Yeah, th this is why I should have everyone download the rules first and have them alongside with me and help me figure this out. <laughs> infantry units and guns that meet any of the following conditions at the start of their part of the route phase that's interesting are subject to route they are in the same hex and location as an enemy unit well th these guys are they are adjacent to an enemy unit that is not in melee yeah we got a lot of that 
They are not in beneficial terrain and are within five hexes of an enemy not in melee whose line of sight is not hindered. Infantry units and guns subject to route must take a morale check. If a unit meets more than one of the above criteria, it still only takes one morale check. Wait, I'm, I'm reading something wrong here. That meet any. Okay, all right, so wait a minute. All right, so I got this Soviet guy in this this uh, hex with two German units. Right. All right, so an infantry unit routes. Okay, so when, are there any sort of uh, any sort of uh, modifiers? Route infantry and guns next to an enemy unit in the same accent. Okay. Minus three on the morale and attempting to leave melee. All right, we got. We're gonna have to read through this, people. This is one of those. So this text. This, so this is how I kind of learn things. Now, again, it's probably best if I don't do this online with people watching. But you know, again, um, this section is one I kind of read through for the. For, you know, I read through, but then I'm like, I'm just gonna have to learn it while it happens because it's just kind of like yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. So, so that's what you get to watch here. Infantry units and guns subject to route. Nice to make a morale check. Okay. So my Soviet guy here. Must make a morale check. His morale right now is 10. So normally he would automatically pass. A unit that passes this morale check is unaffected. A unit cannot voluntarily fail this so that it routes. So I can't like, oh, it failed and he routes out. An infantry unit routes using its normal movement allow. Okay, blah, blah, blah. So where are the modifiers. The following units have their morale increased during the route phase. Starting in 1942, all right, we'll say this is 42. All Russians and Germans in melee against each other have their morale increased by a plus one. Okay. Now why was that? Robert, good evening. You got Dirk Panzer and Band of Brothers and Battle Pack. Woo, woo, good job. Nice. Uh, who got that? Uh, Gustavo. Oh, oh, that's cool. That Battle Pack seems kind of cool. It's got big maps, doesn't it, Gustavo? I thought that looked kind of like a neat one. See, exploring a new game can be a lot of fun unless it's out of print. Then you simply get frustrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know these kind of videos. I love these kind of videos. These videos that pause and then come back with the answer. So how do we learn anything? Yeah, yeah. If a game. All right. So. All right. So. So here's a weird thing. So on the chart here, it says that there's a minus three morale attempting to leave melee. Minus three morale, and you got to make a morale check to leave it. But I don't really want to leave. I mean, the Soviets don't want to leave it, right? They're on the attack. Of course not. Um, well, I mean, he's a ten, so he's going to automatically pass. Uh, no quarter combat, increased morale. The falling units have their morale increased during the route phase. Uh, so he's an 11, so he can't fail even more. SS squads and weapon teams in scenarios versus Russians only. The following full strength units that would be eliminated for failure to route because they failed the morale check by one are instead reduced to remain in place. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. I read that completely wrong the first time. All right, well, I think I think he's going to be fine, and all these guys are going to be fine in this hex. So, um, so this guy's adjacent to units, but he's a ten, so he'll pass. Now this guy is not a ten; he is a one. So let's roll for him. Oh my gosh, it's a one! Wow. So he doesn't have to route. Okay. Uh, this guy is in the open and are within five of not in melee. Was, okay, so he's not hindered, so he has to pass. And he's suppressed, so it's a five. 
I rolled a 10, so he, he failed. All right, so this is good. So now we have to, if the unit fails the morale check by a margin equal to or greater than its casualty rating, it is also reduced. The second number of the front side casualty rating and less. Okay. There's a lot of little things here to kind of go. I mean, it's not complicated. It's just a little. So it's a seven. So I rolled a 10. And so what's the number need to be? What did I say? Fails equal or to in this casualty rating, the second number. So a seven, I failed it by five. So it's a seven. So I do not reduce. So that, but I do have to route. So then how does he route? Uses normal movement allowance five, although it is not considered normal movement, does not trigger off fire. Thank goodness. It must move to a hex that will either give it beneficial train against direct fire from all enemy units or that will place it outside of the enemy. Okay, so that's easy. There's a building here. Bloop. Uh, this guy is the same. He's a five. I rolled a one. He does not need to move. And everyone else is fine on the Soviet side. So I could use these command points to pass those checks too, but I already used them. Now the Germans have to roll. Um, they're all good. They're all tens. He's good. Everyone's good there. So that's all good. Now what phase are we in? Melee phase. This, this, this Russian's dead. Um, whenever an infantry unit occupies the same hex, so let's just pull these out here. I know, I know it's hard to see. I can't zoom in anymore, but um, I guess cool. squint on your screen. It's What's fine. that, Jeff? It's fine. Okay. Um, all right. Whenever an infantry unit occupies the same location as an enemy infantry under a gun, they are considered in melee, even though melee combat is not resolved until after the route phase. The player moving first in the scenario decides the order in which the melees are resolved. They must decide on CP usage and allocate casualties first. A unit with a subscripted melee firepower, uh, fire, so... Um, the weapons team here, the machine gun has a two, so that's their melee firepower. Whereas everyone else doesn't have that. Just weapons teams, it looks like, are probably really weak units or something, but these are all. But I am all. Um, otherwise, the unit uses its normal, not proficient firepower, so the left one, the, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. All right, count each die set. Okay, let's see here. A unit, okay, blah, blah, blah. For its melee firepower, each squad, weapon team, and gun in melee rolls two dice with no modifiers. Count each die separately. For each result that is less than or equal to its melee firepower, <coughs> one enemy unit in that hex is reduced. Owner's choice. Weapon teams and guns are eliminated, not reduced if they suffer casualties in melee. If a CP is spent, okay, so I don't have any command points. So I'm not going to worry about that. Morale does not affect melee combat. Its effect is felt in the route phase. Okay, that's cool. That makes sense. So if these guys, some of these guys got suppressed, that's why you want them to be suppressed. Right. They may have had to route out of the melee, which is cool. Um, so that's good. All right. Uh, both sides make their melee attacks before any casualties are taken, except in the case of concealed units in jungle. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. All right, so I'm going to roll two dice. So the Soviets go first. I rolled a six and a five. Neither one below a four. Okay, so for each result that is equal to one enemy unit in the hex is reduced. Owner's choice. Weapon team. Okay, now that German's going to roll. They have a six. I rolled an eight and a five. So there's one. So he flips. Now this guy rolls. Guess what's going to happen? Oh, six. Now does that have to be less than or equal to? Less than or equal. Okay, well, that guy's dead. But let's see what this die rolled. A nine. Wow, that's interesting. So he's dead. He did. Not surprising. Okay, so that's interesting to understand the melee. And I'm about to sneeze. Okay. Um, only one round of melee is resolved in each location per turn. Only one round. Uh, oh, yeah, the stacking is pretty minimal in this. It's just two units at the end of the moving or at the end of each phase. So that's kind of cool. Right. I don't know. I need to see. I don't have to worry about it, but like 
our tank, I mean, is it just a infantry unit and a tank or can you have two infantry and a tank? I don't know. Probably if it just, I think it just said two. Right, that's the only melee we have. That was a disaster. Okay. Oh, oh, that's morale. Falling full strength. Okay, blah, blah, blah. All right, next. Uh, re is Are we in the recovery phase? Yep. Okay, all units marked with suppression counters, except those in melee. Recover one step of suppression, red to yellow, so all those come off. I think the used one comes off too, but we'll save it. So this fully suppressed guy goes to yellow. So that's kind of cool. Let's move that out here. And it's all my suppressed. And I'll disperse smoke. So they do have, they do talk about smoke, but there's no smoke talked about before this scenario. All used op fire, all used op fire, command points, flank, sustained fire, and illumination counters are removed. Move and unconfirmed kill counters are not removed. The turn counter is advanced to the next turn. If this campaign game, add fatigue. So there's a lot, it's kind of cool. There's a it kind of shows there's a lot of things to coming. What are you rolling? Oh, I didn't, I changed so you wouldn't have to listen to it. Tunisia? Uh, I'm Tunisia too. All right, that's cool. Well, OCS for uh, Jeff. I didn't want to interfere. No, it's good. All right, let's, um, I think you can, the cool thing is you can keep concealment and stuff. So let's check that real quick. Um, you may gain a conceal counter. Um, uh, let's see what do we got here. We got uh, Timmy D. Uh, that's for Joey. B seventy Queen. Okay, Brett Elliott's on. I remember playing Band of Brothers a long time ago. It seemed realistic, but wasn't very exciting. <laughs> well, what I hear about this game is it's all about suppression, more than kills. Right. And um, but the thing is, you definitely want to do is you definitely want to red suppress them. But I, I'm not really clear how you're supposed to do it when you're firing against the guys in buildings. Right. So Joey, you you've got glory on the table. Are, are you having? Are you enjoying it? Are you having issues with it? Easy to play? I mean, I played two or three scenarios. What's your opinion? Um. Yeah, I'm just reading the comments too. All right, cool, cool, cool. Oh, this errata stuff. Okay. Uh, let's see what time it is here. Uh, okay, it's after eight. I think I'm going to, since I got it turned on, I think I'm going to call it good. I, I appreciate everyone watching. Um, it was fun to, um, uh, like I said, I, I keep going here, but I, I need to, I got some, some, I got somewhere to be. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? I know it, um, I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to, tell, it's hard to judge a game by the first turn and stuff. So, um, but, it's a it's a tough nut to crack uh, how to break these guys out of this building. Well, it's not bad that you've gotten you played a turn and you're just starting to learn the game. Yeah, in an hour talking. Yeah. Um. So the Soviets are going to get to go first. The Germans can use a command point to go first. So it may not be a bad idea for them to maybe one of these units fire on this guy in the open. Um, because otherwise he gets to fire on them with that plus three because he's adjacent, but then I've used him, but all that used doesn't matter because he gets to keep firing on these guys when they move in. Right. And I just finished the game turn two. Oh, you certainly did not start that turn though on this. No, no. So I, so the Soviets have 11 counters. Now they're down to 10. So I have to go three, three, four. Does that make sense? What I'm saying there? Yeah, I mean, I don't have a grasp of that command point system. You're saying that whatever command points you have, you have to act, act, activate that many. So yeah, you're. Uh, let's see. Let me use the right term here. I think it's called operations range. Right. The operations range for the Soviets are three to four. So I, the minimum I can command is three. The maximum is four. 
Right. So I have 10 units in here. So if I want to use all the units, which I do, I need I need to command in whatever order, three in an activation, three in an activation, and then four. Because then that would use all 10 units. If right. I went three, three, and three, or then I would lose lose the use of a unit because that's only nine. If I did four and four, that's only that's eight. I would have two units I left to do something with, but I couldn't because my minimum is three. And I think it's just showing like command and control is tough in this with the Soviets, right? Okay. Well, so, yeah, because they had terrible command and control. Right. So if I if I get down to the end of the game, there's only two units. I don't think I can do anything, right? Gotcha. Uh, if I if I'm understanding what's ha what's happening, um, and then the Germans are one to four, so they can which they have better command. So, uh, all right. I, I think what I'll do is here just make a couple comments real quick. So, um, I think we're going to have a <laughs> I think we're having a stream about this. But so there's a lot of sections in the rules up to page nine and further on where it's green because this covers both Europe and uh, uh, not Africa. They don't have Africa yet. Uh, Pacific. So there are a lot of things with um, fog of war. Apparently, facing infantry facing is important in Pacific, which is kind of interesting. Um, and so there's a bunch of things there. But they say that the, many of the rules are optional. So there's a ton of optional rules, Jeff. Uh, oh, hang on to that topic. Uh, anyway, there's a bunch of optional, which I, is cool. So we will be on uh, Hex to Hex channel next week next week so a week and a half from now we're almost two weeks away right right on the 9th of march 9th talking of march. what's that 9th of march you're right 9th of march at 8 central 9 eastern talking about optional rules and variants and so this is cool i'm glad this has got some because i've got another game i want to talk about with on the battle for normandy but um so it's cool anyway and then and then if, as you read further on there's a you know, there's stuff like they do have command and control. So there aren't any leaders in this, but it says somewhere that there are command and control, uh, maybe variants. Oh, here's a recommendation for a solo play. Well, that's cool. Look, another option. So there's command and control. So in, I think in the Pacific one, they have like, um, they have little marker or color stripes at the top right, left-hand corner. Right. So it's companies. So right now, none of these belong to anything. It's kind of like ASL in that way. It's, you know, there's no, in a lot of uh, tactical games, they're all just kind of free for all. I can do whatever I want with them. But it sounds like the Pacific, they have little stripes here. So, you know, you're probably commanding, a, I don't know how it works, but there's company stuff. So that's cool. Um, uh, what was I going to, oh, campaign game rules, section 63, 64, and 65. Our campaign game rules. A campaign game consists of one or more link scenarios. So that's cool. All right. So they got a little campaign system. Oh, that would be, yeah. There you go. That'd be nice. Um, if they're linked, which I don't think any of these are linked in this particular game, but there are a few. I think the Texas Arrows one has that. Um, and of course, there's pillboxes and can't, remember we talked about canister ammunition and all that stuff, satchel charges. So there's a lot of stuff going on here that I'm not even close to. Such. The next training scenario, this is four turns, by the way. And it's kind of cool. They give you some strategy tips and stuff like that. Um, I don't, they don't say to roll low, so I wasn't doing it. The next training scenario is um, uh, all tanks. And then no one gets, no one gets command points in the, whoa. Goodness, the command range for the the operations range for the Germans are three to nine, which is weird because they only have seven six units. Why would they give them such a high operations range with six units? Do they get multiple? Maybe. Oh, sounds like you got some rule reading to do. Yeah, I definitely do there. Um, and then they the Soviets are three to six, and they've got six seven. So again, oh they. So they, they won't never, unless once tanks start getting destroyed, they can, at the beginning, they can't command all their units. So that's kind of cool. Right. So no radios and tanks is one way to look at that. All right. So that's cool. Uh, let's see. Any other comments here? Pinning is key in this game? Yeah. So suppression. So, uh, Joey, 
So suppression, so they have three numbers here, 10, 5, and 1. It's usually 10, 5. Oh, this is 10, 6, and 1. 10, 6, and 2. So the weapon team never goes below 2. So this is their morale. So there's a, I got to nail this down. You, you roll a morale check to do things. So like, um, so these guys are suppressed here. This is a good example. So these guys are suppressed. So to do anything, if I want to activate them, I have to pass a morale check of five or less. I have to look if they, that morale is affected by these adjacent guys and blah, blah, blah. Um, so he may not get to do anything. So that starts to, you know, hurt your units here. That's why you really want to suppress these guys. And you, and you see that they, that suppression comes off automatically. So you really need to fully suppress these guys. And then it's a one. So it's hard for them to do anything. And then they, when they, at the end of the turn, they at least go to yellow. So then it becomes tougher for them to do stuff. Here at the beginning, they're passing everything. You don't even have to roll. I, I think it would be interesting if you had rolled and you rolled a 10, you failed. But I don't know. The, at least that's why you get to do something. Because um, you see the way I'm rolling, I roll 10s. So, so yeah. And so if the, and, and when you get in melee, uh, so Joey, that's another good point. Um, uh, when you get into melee, the route face happens first and they have to pass. They, if they fail that, then they route out. So they're going to run away. And I think there's potential casualties there or something that could happen, maybe. But it's a way that, again, suppression is how you win this game. So these guys would come out. Now, the interesting thing is, if these guys were suppressed, um, let's say this in here, and these guys were, well, hmm, let's just say there was one unit in here. And these guys are in here. These guys are suppressed. They fail. They would route out. And then this guy now wins a building. So now this guy's got to come in and retake it. So it, it still works. Um and what's stacking? Can you stack in this game? Oh yeah, you, never mind. Just yeah, yeah, it, it's two. I, let's check though, but it's I'm pretty sure it's two. And do the Soviets have any weapons teams down here on this bottom side? Yeah, they got one right there. Could you have used them to suppress units across the street before you moved, or did you? I didn't. Well, know. Jeff, when you roll a nine or ten, it doesn't do jack crap. Ah, uh, so stop doing that. Yeah. So that's my first that. Hey, Joe, you put together those tactical tips from Gunny or whatever on uh, Facebook. You why don't you um, put that one in there? Roll well. <laughs> now, I don't like to blame rolling for my games. I really don't. <laughs> so um, it's just fun. Uh, yes, they did. You posted a thing for that. I hit the notify me. It's always fun. Your tooth start moving backwards. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. All right. So what I'll, I'll probably do after I've done watching the show, I'll probably play some more. I probably won't go live there because that way I can kind of just learn it. But anyway, thanks all for jumping on here and uh, encouraging me to play. Jeff, thanks for coming on and asking questions and reading the comments. Yep. And uh, we'll see you all next time. Peace. Peace. See you.